Hello everyone, this is a video on the disassembly and reassembly of the Walboro WF7 series of carburetors. You will see ahead of you what you will need to do this procedure. We have the instruction manual, the Windrosa gasket kit, part number is right there. I'll put that up at the bottom of the screen somewhere somehow and the tools you'll need. You'll need something for taking pictures, you'll need a screwdriver with flat head, scraper, pliers, a measurement tool, and a small ratchet with a 5 16 and a half inch. So step number one really is when you're starting with this you want to mark off on the two connections to the carburetor with a paint tip type marker exactly where the carburetor was connected so that you can reconnect it with the same settings as before. Step number one in the manual says that you take the carburetor and you give it a good cleaning. Now this manual was written back in the 1970s so I would recommend something else as well. At this point you want to take a picture of each side the front, the back all around so you know exactly how the carburetor is set up from the get-go. I think that's a good step. I think you should have your phone next to you the entire time you're doing this so you can consistently take pictures. So starting off with disassembly we're going to start by taking off the float bowl. It's basically four screws Hold the bowl together, gently take it off, open it up, set this down. First step is to remove the float and the float pin. Be careful. Once again, at this point I would take pictures again, various different angles, uh, just so you get to know kind of where everything is and you don't miss anything. Take our pliers, pin out, and I would recommend as well having a good workspace. I like a terry cloth towel where I can set things down kind of in the order that I take them apart. Um, from here we want to take out the float pin, lay that down, when we're looking here, um, we see, oh, what are they calling it? Anyways, what we'd like to do is take this little pin out. And to do that, we need a small punch. And we're going to punch this pin out this way because this part here is knurled knurled into the carburetor and that's what's holding the pin in place. So we get a hammer and give it a little knock. Careful she'll pop out. You can see the end is knurled a little bit. Pull that out. Put it safely away. The pin. this bad boy and here we have the gasket. Next we're going to take out the float valve seat which is that part right there. We need our small ratchet with the uh, 5 16 Pull that out. Now be careful. Inside, right there, is a tiny little copper or brass gasket. The book says it's brass, looks copper to me, who might argue. 
Um, get a little pin of some sort. That'll pull it out. Oh, get out of there, you little bastard. And here we go. Very careful not to lose it. So now we're looking at the top fuel pump portion of the carburetor. We take off the four screws and let's be very careful here. Do this slowly. We're going to take the top part off and let's look at this. Remember to have your camera in hand to take pictures, lots and lots of pictures. So we take this off. On this portion we see the diaphragm, the gasket, the fuel pumper, and the assembly. Um, obviously I've just finished doing this project so everything's nice and clean. If you have trouble taking off the gaskets, I would strongly recommend um, using a, kind of a fairly sharp uh, tool and just get under and slowly take off. Try not to rip the, uh, the existing gaskets you have, uh, even though they're going to be replaced. Do your best to take them off nicely because you never know if something's not going to fit or you need something in a pinch. Um, that being said, next step, take this portion off. Again, we have the gasket. Another diaphragm. Remember to be very careful with these diaphragms. And the basic assembly. Here we have um, this throttle control bracket and again the gasket. And like I said, very careful, very careful. We don't want to break the gaskets. There's a little spring in here. Be very, very careful not to lose this. And it comes up. This actually seats this bad boy here. Goes through the whole thing. And you'll see that again a little later. So let's make sure not to lose it. The next step in the process is to take out the enrichener, which is this right here. Now, let's be very careful because right in there, there's a little ball. Let's not lose this ball, so do this part very carefully. Pull it out. Oh, and there's a the little ball. Let's make sure we not don't lose that. Put that down. Pretty simple. Next, we're going to take out the throttle valve. The way to get this out is to turn it, oh, again, pictures. Take a good picture of this and there's a reason for that. When you're reassembling, you're going to have to make sure these two are on the bottom and at the top corner there's a little notch that needs to be lined up as well. That being said, you turn it perfectly flat and you pull the bad boy out. From here, there's a little retention screw that we need to remove. Don't lose it. You 
going to feel immediately this thing move because it's spring pressured. And then this assembly pulls out. Next we're going to remove the idle adjustment screw. This is pretty easy. No tricks. Careful to not lose the screw. Moving along to the float bowl. We take out the jet limiting plug, a small half inch ratchet. Nice and simple. There's a valve seat right around here. Mine didn't remove very well, so I just kind of left it. And that's it. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Keep your work area clean and simple. Uh, wash everything. And then uh, it's going to be time for reassembly. So, reassembly is the same as disassembly. Start with the jet limiting plug. Tight enough so you don't strip anything. The book says three to four pounds. So, putting back the um, throttle shaft control mount. Make sure spring is touching here. This goes in this way. And this little guy is going to be resting itself over here. And you can just turn the spring around. You have to push it through. Hold it real tight. And get the little retaining ring back on. And there we go. And the adjustment screw is still touching right there. And you have a good bit of a uh, good bit of force on it. Now we're reassembling the throttle valve. Take your throttle, open it up, make sure this thing is lined up right in the middle, it slides into place. As you can see inside, you can line it up. Hope you can see inside anyways, but you line it up, you can see where the lines are. Right about here, where it was before, and here. See how it's popping up, you can see it. So now we line it up so it's about what it was. Now we get our screw and little washer. Tighten it so it's tight enough, but not too tight. And that's it. You'll notice the two little open areas there in the bottom. And on the top there's a little um, cutout as well. So at this point we're going to put the enrichener valve back on. Make sure your little ball is right there. This should just slide right into place. You'll hear a click when the ball gets into place. Click when it's open, click when it's closed. You can see right there. And that allows a lot of gas into it when you're trying to start the machine. 
Now we get to reassembly of the carburetor. Start off with a little spring that you did not lose. It slips right in there. Has the nice gasket. And that goes right on. Throttle control bracket. Goes on top like that. Blocks off the spring, keeps everything in place. It keeps the um, the this bracket keeps it in there so it doesn't slip out. Now we get to the fuel pump portion. We have the top gasket goes on top. Diaphragm. There we get that. Like that. Then we have diaphragm. Put that around a bit. Everything lines up nice. Gasket. And the assembly goes on top. Start getting our screws in. Metal adjustment screw. Manual says to put this finger tight, and we're going to adjust that later. Now, one of the hardest parts of this video is coming up. We put the brass copper gasket in float valve seat the oh, what do you call this thing float valve lever like so so it's facing out Remember, the knurled part is right in there. You can see the smooth part of the pin and the knurled part. So we want it facing like this, the little hook thing here. Slide that in. Seated and flushed. Now, one of the harder parts of the video. Eh, looks easy enough, but can be difficult. So we have the float spring. Notice we are putting a little end part of the spring right there. So one part of the spring, hard to see, but you're gonna have this little portion right here. It's gonna be on the outside right there. And this is gonna go in place. Let's get the slider in. So we'll get that in there, like so. 
put it in there. This part is on top over here. This part's going to be, this little angle is going to be right there. I hope you can see it. So we're going to slide this on. Oops, looks like I missed the spring. Spring. Slide it down. Turn the spring so that little part's on the outside. This goes all the way through, so the spring is now in. All is not easy with these carburetors, though. We want right now. See that just falls, just kind of falls and dangles. That's not what we want. So we're going to turn the spring like so. Let's try one like that. Let's see what happens here. Still falling straight down. Turn the spring again. There we go. That's much better. Book says it wants it, if you pull it down like this, it wants it to go up about three quarters. So that's about there, roughly. So I'm going to do the turn this spring one more time just to get a little bit more oomph. Oh, I think I missed it. In there. Tricky little guy. Oh, that's too much. Let's go. down it comes up roughly three quarters oh, might not be able to see that too well but when you're holding it flat it's supposed to be about three quarters of an inch from here to here and it's supposed to be bringing it back up like that hopefully you can see that so now that that's done get the little pin and that goes in there just like that. And what's supposed to happen is these little floats should be about 15 sixteenths high. So you get a depth gauge and you check it to see if it's about 15 sixteenths. We are pretty much there. From there, we get our top assembly. Let's get the gasket on. Get the gasket on, make sure the little tabs are poking through. 
Oh yes, this uh, guide, for lack of a better term, forgive me for not having all the terminology, pointed end stays up like this, and what happens is you've got to be able to push that down and feel it push back. There has to be a spring there, a little spring that we had to make sure that we didn't forget. So we take this, put it on top, there we go. Manual says you have to feel it push up back against you. And if you're not feeling that push, you didn't put your spring back. And that's it, folks. Just tighten up the screws. Uh, one more thing. So, according to the book, we're going to adjust this air screw here. This we want to have it fully closed as you turn clockwise. Oh, there we go, it's seated. And the air screw, you want to make it one and three quarter turns. There's half. There's one. There's half. There's three quarters. For you astute students, you will have picked up on this, but I did make a minor error. Off. I forgot to put this bad boy on. See those two dots? Put them right in there. Gasket first. Diaphragm second. Make sure that's on properly. Hard to do with one hand. And back on. There we go. Make sure it's on properly. Good. Then we screw it back on. And that's it. That is the Walboro WF7 carburetor. I would ask you to like and subscribe, but I suggest that you don't. I don't plan on making many of these videos. I just found that this one had not been covered and I was very nervous about doing this. And uh, I think it uh, turned out well. I would strongly suggest you get a manual for it. I'll put a link somewhere, somehow, that tells you all the steps. This is great. The pictures are all right. Uh, but I found that a video certainly helps a lot, and I hope you enjoyed it. Take care.